Hi everyone, it's great to be back together again. And I want to start us out by saying, again, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon for his bride, the church. He could come at any moment. So we should be waiting eagerly to meet our Lord face to face. It's going to be an incredible moment. There aren't even words available to express how awesome that moment will be. But on the flip side of that, there's also a day of judgment coming for all those who have not trusted in Christ as their Savior. This is going to be a frightful and horrifying and devastating, destructive time. Jesus Christ describes it in Matthew 24, 21. Let me read what he said about it. He called it a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall. Please listen as I read 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 3 through 5 from the Christian Standard Bible. When they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark, so that this day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Let's pray. Father, I praise you that you are light. And because we belong to you, we are of the light as well. Thank you for the truths you teach us about end times in your holy word. And I pray that your word today by the Holy Spirit would give light to all who hear. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Did you know there are multiple photos of Jared Kushner, senior advisor to President Trump, standing in front of a sign that reads, Peace and Security in the Middle East. These pictures were taken in connection with Kushner's role in President Trump's peace plan, known as Peace to Prosperity. I have to say, it feels almost surreal and somewhat eerie to see some of the exact words from 1 Thessalonians 5.3 just written out in current news. But we shouldn't be surprised because God's word is true. Everything scripture tells us about future events will come to pass in God's perfect timing. Another news item related to Trump's peace plan is the Abraham Accord, which was signed on Tuesday, September 15th at the White House. This agreement formally established peace plus normalization of ties between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. The Kingdom of Bahrain also signed an agreement with Israel at the same ceremony. And there are strong expectations of other countries to follow suit. Listen to this statement about the Abraham Accords at whitehouse.gov and I quote, promoting peace and security. These agreements are leading to peace between Israel and the Middle East, as well as increased security in the region, end quote. There are those same words again, peace, and security. Some Christians are considering the Abraham Accord as the beginning of the Daniel 9.27 covenant in which the Antichrist confirms a covenant with many. Others disagree, seeing it as a peace deal preparing the way for the Ezekiel 38 war. Time will tell. Let's just keep our eyes on the Abraham Accords and see where they go from here. And just one other significant event in the news that I want to mention. According to the timesofisrael.com, the United States is arranging a Middle East peace summit to be held sometime this month in September in the Middle East. Countries such as Bahrain, Oman, Morocco, Sudan, and Chad have reportedly already agreed to attend. So as you can see, efforts toward peace and security in the Middle East are in high gear. Now, enough of the news. I want us to focus in now on 1 Thessalonians 5. Let me read verse 3 again. When they say peace and security, 
then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. I really struggled with how to present this verse clearly because there are so many details I want to talk about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just kind of proceed through the verse word by word or phrase by phrase. And we're going to start with the first word, when. This is a timing word. And, and this verse tells us when they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes. The fact that we see the phrase peace and security in relation to current events should get our attention because that makes it all the more likely sudden destruction is near. Next, the word they is interesting to consider. If you have your Bible open, look back at verses 1 through 2 of 1 Thessalonians 5. Notice that the Apostle Paul addresses the Thessalonian believers as you. But here in verse 3, he switches pronouns and he uses the pronoun they. So if the you refers to Christians, who are the they? I believe they speaks of different non-Christian world leaders, plus perhaps non-Christian people in general. Those are the people who say peace and security and upon whom sudden destruction comes. Now let's talk about the phrase peace and security, which has been and is widely used. It's one of the issues listed on the United Nations website, and it's used by other organizations too. Even though it's a widely used phrase, however, there's coming a day when it will be spoken for the last time before destruction suddenly hits. Everyone will think all is well, but destruction will catch them all by surprise. Speaking of sudden destruction, I believe this phrase could refer to the beginning of the tribulation because verse four talks about this day. Paul said, but you brothers are not in the dark so that this day would overtake you like a thief. Remember last time in session 13 when we talked about the day of the Lord? Well, here's that term again in abbreviated form. This day in verse 4 refers to the day of the Lord in verse 2, which is, and I'm going to quote myself from session 13, quote, a period of time that begins when the seven-year tribulation starts, end quote. So we can link this definition of day in verse 4 back to the phrase sudden destruction in verse 3, and we can determine it could refer to the beginning of the tribulation. I tend to lean that direction. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but I just wanted to put this thought out there for you to consider. Finally, this sudden destruction is likened to labor pains on a pregnant woman. I still remember being in labor with each of my four children, even though it was years ago. But once the contractions started, they did not stop until each baby was born. It's fascinating, really, how labor pains just begin suddenly and they continue at regular intervals of time, getting closer and closer until the baby's born. In the same way, sudden destruction will crash in on the unbelieving world and not one person will escape it. Think about that for a minute. Not one person will escape. That's a terrifying thought. And I, it makes me think of the scripture that says, it's, it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, I really don't like to talk about judgment. It's a lot more wonderful to talk about God's love and mercy and grace. But the truth is, judgment is coming on this world. God has his standard for righteousness, and none of us measure up. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's you and me. We all deserve God's judgment. But in his love, mercy, and grace, God sent his only beloved son to this earth. Jesus Christ is the only one who lived a perfect, righteous life. He offered himself as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And then he rose again on the third day. Because he lives, we can too. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. 
I ask you, do you need to be forgiven of your sins? Believe in the Lord Jesus. He is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. The Bible says we're redeemed, meaning we're bought back by the precious blood of Christ. And God reconciles us to himself through Christ. That, my friends, is true peace and security. Now, I realize most, if not all of you who are watching and participating in this Bible study already know Christ as your Savior. And, of course, that makes me very glad. And I especially want to encourage you to just live every day for the Lord and share the gospel as God gives you opportunity. Because there are a lot of people in the world who don't know Christ as their Savior. And the Lord Jesus, when he was leaving this earth, that's what he tasked us with. That's his peace plan for us. It's to be in this ministry of reconciliation, to share the gospel with others, and to help people come to know the Lord as their Savior. So it's very important we take that seriously, that we don't waste time, but spend it wisely sharing the gospel with other people. And if you're watching this today and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I urge you to accept God's free gift of salvation by trusting in Jesus as your Savior. Receive him into your heart and allow him to make you a new creature. In Christ, we become new. Isn't that beautiful? God is the only one who knows the exact timing of end times events. And yet he gives us details in his word for our information, such as those details we see here in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. It's very kind of him to kind of let us in on the program. And I've heard others say, God has revealed truths about the end times. So we can know what's going on. He does not want us to feel like we're in the dark, fumbling around for answers. Verse 4 says, you brothers are not in the dark. Verse 5 calls us sons of light and sons of the day. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world. God is light. And by knowing him, we are enabled to know more about his plan for the end times. Understanding Bible prophecy, even just a little bit, is comforting. It has really helped me in this year of COVID-19 and all the other distressing stuff going on in our world. It's, it's just been a hope and a comfort in my heart, and I thank the Lord for this truth. I hope today's study has helped you as well. I know it's been full of details, and sometimes those can feel cumbersome, so I really appreciate you sticking with me. And my desire is that the Lord would use this message from his word to bless you with true peace and security in Christ. I want to close out today by mentioning several items. The first is, if you could comment below and leave your thoughts about this message, I would really enjoy hearing from you. You could even share your thoughts about what I said concerning the day of the Lord. Do you think that in this 1 Thessalonians 5 passage, it refers to the coming tribulation? That would be interesting to hear. Any other thoughts? I would like to hear as well. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is please subscribe to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love for you to come back. And if you're a regular viewer, if you're already a subscriber, thank you. I appreciate it. And it's great to, to share God's word. It, it truly brings me joy. And it's such a privilege to do that. I don't take it lightly. The third thing I wanted to say is you can find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, LinkedIn. So please look me up. I would love to connect with you through that venue. And the final thing is I have a website, ProclaimingHimToWomen.com, and I invite you to subscribe to my blog. I really try not to flood everybody's inbox, and plus just with the other things on my schedule, I only write twice a month on my website, and actually the first 
uh, article I write is really my ministry update. It comes out the second Tuesday of every month, and it only goes out to my subscribers. It's kind of a perk for being a subscriber. I don't put it out there for the general public. So that's a good reason to subscribe. You can keep up with what God is doing in this ministry. And the other time I write is the fourth Tuesday of each month, and that is a blog post for anyone and everyone. So I hope that you'll take a minute to connect with me on one or all of those venues. I again appreciate you being here. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And until next time, keep looking up.